Et puis, euh, donc voilà, il est arrivé comme ça, il repart comme ça. Exactement, ça c'est une fin de cinéma ça. Voilà. Et donc, euh, on va quand même regarder ce qui se passe dehors, parce que c'est pas tout. Nous, nous sommes à la cape, là, j'ai l'habitude maintenant. Donc, euh, ça aide. Et voilà, le Nevos. À droite 10. À droite. Alors, non, clac, clac, clac. Non, j'avais oublié parce que là, il y a plein d'histoires. Le voilà habillé dans sa TPS, euh, Kevin. Voilà. Bon, allez, à plus. Voilà, voilà l'embarcation avec euh... super. Non. Bon, alors, écoute. Hein. Un bisou. Bisous Macaï, merci. Salut. Bout pour vous, c'est bon T'as pas besoin de bout, tu vas tout, tu vas nature. Ouais. Et voilà. Ok, merci. Je vais refaire autre. Ok, à plus Bon, bah, j'espère que je ne vais pas rater ma prise de vue, parce que là, il y avait du, du lourd. Hein. Donc là, ils repartent euh, avec le Zodiac sur le, sur le Nevos. Et voilà, je me rêve là tout seul. Alors, une fois avec euh, tout seul, après en double et après, euh, après encore tout seul. Clac, clac, clac. Good morning and yes we can shall we drink to that this morning i mean that was some real deep blue hero stuff yesterday uh, you know seeing kevin escossier being uh you know uh, jumping off of jean le camp's boat and uh, going with the marines to uh, i guess ultimate safety and uh, now so really good uh, for him but uh yeah what sean has done really really amazing to see right amazing to be able to um, experience something uh, like that and uh, just a uh, deep deep uh, respect so uh, you know shall we put this one uh, to Jean uh, today here we go trois deux un yes we can oh that's a good start of the uh, Sunday and uh, so uh, lots happened actually uh, yesterday and also lots of interesting things to uh, talk about uh, uh, interesting stuff happening in the Trophée uh, uh, Jules Verne but uh, let's start with uh, the fact that uh, Sam Davis of course uh, yesterday also uh, made the choice to uh, retire after uh, having uh, had uh, big conversations with her team over the last two days figuring out you know was it maybe possible for her to continue she finally uh, officially retired from the race so she's now actually in Cape Town uh, together with Alex Thompson and uh, she has said though that she will try to uh, finish the race so she's going to try to affect repairs and if she's able to um, you know get the boat in the water in a timely fashion she would like to try to 
actually finish uh, the course also you know to support the the great course that she's uh, uh, supporting so uh, you know that'll be interesting to see let's uh, let's see uh, what happens there but uh, power to her if she uh, wants to uh, try uh, at least to uh, uh, make that uh, uh, happen. Similarly, uh, kind of big news that uh, for, for this particular moment in the race, that we've actually now arrived at the point where all of the boats are so far down the course that we can kind of officially say that um, we are, have one fourth of the race uh, behind us. So one quarter. And now uh, you know, think of the, you know, all of the, the racing, the drama, the damages, the repairs and everything that we've kind of gone through uh, uh, so far and then realizing that that was only the first quarter uh, of the race with just, you know, the, the full body of the race still, uh, you know, waiting uh, for us uh, to happen in the future. So uh, makes you think, right? And uh, also made me want to kind of, uh, you know, share with you, um, you know, something that's really, that I find really amazing about this race personally. Uh, kind of uh, interesting how you guys feel about it. But my idea is that uh, I, I started, of course, this race by picking three boats to kind of follow, you know, to kind of view the race through. I took an older boat that wasn't modified um, and, uh, you know, just an old kind of race classic uh, with, uh, with Pip Hair, somebody I really, you know, admire and, uh, and I think she's just doing amazing. Um, then I picked a, a more, more modern uh, boat, but modified, so uh, an older previous generation boat, but heavily modified with just the newest foils and everything. Um, Initiative Skur with, uh, with Sam Davies. And of course, for the super modern, uh, you know, ultra boats of this year, I, uh, I selected uh, the Beast with Alex Thompson to really follow. And uh, how, how interesting, how sobering is it? Who could have, you know, really predicted that just one quarter into the race, it's Pip Hare right now that is about to, um, you know, uh, go and sail uh, happily past uh, the Cape of uh, Good Hope. While uh, near that same cape, uh, both uh, Sam Davis and Alex Thompson are both now uh, in the marina affecting uh, uh, repairs to their uh, uh, boats. And so Sam Davis may be uh, thinking about uh, continuing and at least, uh, you know, doing, doing the entire uh, uh, course. And, you know, on the one hand, of course, it, it sucks that, you know, two of uh, my personal uh, favorites also for the race have been, you know, ha have had to uh, 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 drop out through no real fault of their own, but out they are still the same. And uh, at the same time, I think that's something that is just so cool about this race, that it's so uh, all or nothing, you know, there are a lot of people also emailed me and they say, oh, how, how can this race be so hard? How can they really like be out? Um, and there is something to be said for that, but I also really feel that that's one of the great appeals of this race is that it's so binary. It's so everything or nothing. It's around the world with no assistance, right? And so it sucks to be out, but on the other hand, for those who complete the race, it is really the ultimate uh, achievement. And, and if you guys have been following me, you know now, even though we're only a quarter into the race, how much, uh, how, how much of a mix it is of everything. You know, it's real life all mixed in one. And uh, it's skill, it's preparation, it's, you know, what you bring, it's a technology that you create with your team, but it's also, you know, the, the luck of the gods and Lady Fortune, you know, smiling a little bit on you and, you know, nudging you and helping you along the way. And it's also camaraderie and, you know, what we've seen with Jean Lecam today, being there for your fellow sailors, realizing that even though this is a, a tough race and the, the prestige of winning and all that stuff, but in the end, it's all, you know, just uh, fun and games, quote unquote, compared to, um, you know, the risk of, uh, of losing a life. And I think that all of that wrapped together really makes this race something very unique and very um, uh, special. So my message to those of you who, you know, feel a little bit uh, sad over those, uh, you know, few uh, retirements that we've seen, um, you know, keep good spirits, you know, uh, look at, uh, at what Kevin is doing, look at what Jean Lacan did and, um, you know, keep following this race, keep into it because it only gets better and it only gets, uh, you know, more beautiful uh, towards the end. And all that humanity, uh, that's supposed uh, to happen, right? That's, that's what this race um, is all about. And so the drama continues because one thing that uh, many of you uh, yesterday uh, noticed, and I also mentioned it already a little bit uh, in the show yesterday, 
is that uh, Lewis Burton, who many of us predicted would soon take the lead, uh, didn't. And apparently there was a good reason uh, for that, which is that he has been experiencing um, some uh, autopilot uh, problems. Not really specific what exactly is going wrong, but for those of you who are less familiar, uh, autopilots in general have a tougher time when you're sailing uh, downwind. The reason for that, uh, I, I explained in an earlier video, the problem with broaching, with uh, Chinese jibing or accidental uh, jibing, which is one of the absolute boat killer things. It's something that you really don't want to happen. And the fact that uh, sailing on big waves means that you have to kind of uh, you know, steer up a wave, then you have to kind of go almost straight over the crest. And then when you go down, you have to kind of bend a little bit again. So you're going over the waves kind of at an angle, but then right at the top, you want to go kind of straight over the wave and then you want to sail them at an angle again. And of course the waves usually come in with the wind. And so uh, uh, for, for a human, it's doable because you can visually see the, uh, the wave. And with the wind kind of behind you, um, it's very important to never kind of go through the middle because with the wind coming from behind, it will slam your boom over to the other side, which can just destroy your mast because there's so much force uh, in that. And you know, a boom uh, on one of these boats can be you know, easily six, seven meters long. So that's a huge you know, 12 meter space that all that weight is going to swing through and that can just snap your mast in half. So you really want to um, prevent that. And autopilots in general have a much tougher time with that downwind and and like they, they can steer through it. The steering is not really the problem. The problem is that autopilots are much more prone to uh, fall into that accidental uh, jibe because autopilots can't see, right? And so they do want to make that kind of right knick over the uh, crest of the wave. But if an autopilot goes a little bit too far, it doesn't care, right? It doesn't necessarily understand the, the seriousness of that uh, uh, jibe. And so especially when you're on a very broad uh, reach when you're a very broad angle with the wind, you know, very much almost right behind you. Uh, it can be very, very tricky for autopilots to function because you can, you know, uh, have lots of uh, uh, Chinese jibes if you're not uh, uh, careful. So it's anyway to begin with a, a difficult, just the most difficult course to sail for the autopilots right now because in the Southern Ocean, they're almost all the time on a downwind uh, angle. So they almost never tack. It's just one jibe after another to kind of work uh, uh, with the wind. But they're almost always uh, more or less downwind sailing, maybe here and there beam reach, but mostly it will be beam reach to, you know, just a, just a high percentage of, of real downwind sailing. And so it's tough for the autopilots. And so whatever problem it is that uh, Kevin's been having, um, you know, might have something to do uh, with that, may not. There, there are no details available on it, but um, yeah, he's He's having problems with that and so as a consequence of that he's just not been able to uh, use the autopilot for the most part and that scamps on sleep which you know brings down your energy which makes it harder to really push the boat fast and so we see uh, you know uh, uh, Lewis just uh, losing a lot of speed uh, over that and um, yeah I hope that he's able to uh, fix the problem and uh, yeah, we'll see uh, we'll see what happens over the next uh, 24 hours if he's really able to uh, Get his boat uh, fully in the race as of now it, it, I heard that he has been uh, able to you know make some progress But that the boats really not all the way uh, there yet So um, you know, let's hope and pray and uh, see what happens now uh, if you look with me here on the screen We can see uh, you know kind of the position of, uh, of Jean Le Cam. You can see this kind of knick here in his uh, in his path uh, which is the location uh, where uh, Kevin actually uh, got off. So he's been, uh, you know, kind of resumed uh, uh, racing for a while um, now. And uh, uh, no news exactly on, um, you know, the type of uh, allowance that will be made for uh, Jean Le Cam exactly, because only now, you know, we know the moment that the, the rescue for him is more or less officially over. And so now the, the kind of the team of professionals at the, uh, at the race control will, you know, convene together and uh, you know weigh uh, all of the time etc uh, invested uh, you know maybe uh, you know weather weather pattern loss the fact that he may have you know lost the opportunity to catch certain winds that he was able to do and they will kind of mix all of that uh, uh, together and come to a decision of what exactly the the allowance uh, that will be made for for Sean in order to kind of compensate him within the race 
for the fact that he had to uh, uh, rescue um, uh, Kevin Escoffier and uh, similar of course for the other uh, three gens that had to divert their course in order to uh, see if they could uh, assist. So I expect somewhere within the next 48 hours or so that there probably is going to be a decision on that and some news on that and so you know expect that maybe in um, the next uh, uh, show. But it means that we're uh, yeah more or less now fully uh, uh, racing again so uh, I guess that's really uh, good news and uh, when we look at the map we see that uh, the weather right now um, looks pretty um, uh, good for everybody we see that this uh, kind of low uh, pressure is nicely moving around and uh, that's anyway something I wanted to mention shortly so um, basically the uh, I'll show you here on the screen so basically the the south of our uh, planet as I mentioned before it has this kind of circle where there is no land and so the, the wind and the waves can basically go all the way around the planet through the gap here at Cape Horn and never uh, never touch um, any land or any anything else there's no land masses to to stop it so they just keep on going basically uh, uh, forever and uh, the weather system uh, particularly because we are like a round planet and we're spinning so we get this kind of turbulences right um, and so you can kind of see it here that you have this constantly circular moment so here's one here's one if you look a little bit further we'll probably catch it so there's another one and uh, you know here's another one and basically here in the center is also it's less pronounced but it's also another one then we have Cape Horn here and then we have uh, the one that we uh, started with uh, again and we see another one here and so basically these uh, low pressure systems are constantly uh, kind of moving around the planet as well and so the sailing that uh, uh, the all of the uh, the van der globe racers are going to be doing now is more or less trying to stay with uh, one of these systems as long as they can. Now usually these systems will move a little faster than the boats can uh, uh, go. So eventually they will uh, you know, kind of, uh, kind of be moved from the front to the back of these systems and then they'll lose them. They'll have you know, sometimes a day or two of a little bit less uh, uh, wind of slightly calmer seas and then inevitably the next low pressure system is going to uh, roll by again picking them up, moving them further until they move through and that's basically the cycle that they're uh, that they're all going to uh, get into now and so it's very interesting sailing in a way that you you know there's no other place in the world where in a way the weather is so uh, predictable in the sense that you just know we're going to have really strong weather so most of them are right now in uh, at least in the head of the fleet are in 30 30 knots uh, you know up to 35 maybe uh, 40 and will be so for the next at least 48 hours or so maybe a little bit longer um, then they'll have one or two days of lesser wind sometimes shorter sometimes a bit longer but more or less a period like that and then uh, the next two three days of just really really strong weather will come through and so it's a rhythm and of course they're going to be here for two and a half three weeks uh, you know making this uh, circle through uh, the arctic for some of those slower boats a little bit longer maybe four four and a half and so uh, the, the rhythm of day and night combined with this rhythm of the of the these low pressures moving around the world kind of picking them up and moving them moving them a bit around and then kind of leaving leaving them again behind them and then waiting for the next one to pick up that's going to be driving uh, the strategy for the sailors for for those uh, uh, next week so they're always going to be looking at you know where am I in the system now when is the system going to kind of leave me behind and then where do I need to be in order to be ideally positioned for the next system uh, that will come in to you know pick me up and bring me the furthest and so I can stay in it the furthest and so that's the strategic thing that's going to be constantly uh, in their minds from now on and plus of course that sometimes these storms can be very very intense so it's a balance between how south they go, uh, usually how much stronger uh, the winds are. And so it's, it's this balance between how dangerous, how much risk, how much speed, and how exactly does the system turn so they have to make the least amount of jibes. All of that stuff basically um, you know, is what they're going to have to constantly be uh, thinking about for the next uh, four weeks. So for everybody, if you're not so familiar with that, it's good to keep uh, in the back of your mind. And so the first system here that we see kind of rolling around, so we see the center of it, now that's going to be moving uh, you know, to the uh, east. We see a second one here also a little bit uh, to the side of that. And so when we uh, put the prediction uh, on, on run, let the prediction run a little bit here, 
I set the course for the four uh, leaders so we can keep a bit of an eye on how the weather will move. And so we see that this particular weather right now, kind of behind uh, uh, the sailors, moving slowly in. And we can see that, uh, especially here, that some of them will, will go through a bit of a thicker patch uh, of it. So they'll get, you know, most likely something like uh, 40 knots uh, or, or more, maybe gust up to 50 there. So that's pretty uh, intense. Also includes Lewis Burton, by the way. So that'll be, that'll be really something for him. I hope that he's able to really fix that autopilot in the next few days. And uh, then, as you can see, we see this kind of split now. And so that's the one system and the next one kind of, you know, going their, uh, their separate ways. You might see, you see on top of here that another system is kind of grabbing the wind there, pushing it to the other, uh, pushing it to the other side. And so uh, you see immediately this kind of ridge happening in here. And so that's where most of them are gonna really want to try to get ahead of that so that they kind of make the connection with the next system that's going to be uh, rolling through and that they can stay kind of in that so that will be uh, monday evening more or less when they when they will have uh, hopefully caught into this new system and then will make their way uh, uh, forward with kind of all of those who who don't make it in there so who are a little bit uh, uh, behind probably uh, getting into one of those zones where you have a day maybe two of not so much wind and having to wait for kind of the next system uh, uh, to run through because you can see that this this kind of zone with a little bit more wind that is kind of behind this other place is kind of getting separated and a little bit dislodged so maybe we'll see that that will just kind of dissipate sometimes it happens sometimes it will you know gain strength but it seems like this one is going to sort of slowly yeah it looks like it's going to more or less slowly fiddle out because it's kind of lost its connection there ah yeah and then so tuesday we see a new low kind of build from that uh, a little bit more uh, ahead of them with a real with a real ridge uh, there so yeah that's kind of what the weather looks like for the next uh, uh, two days and so that means that uh, you know for those of you in the vr we have an amazing uh, vr team with over 40 uh, sailors in the uh, sea wolves uh, vr team right away so uh, on the website we have a tab vr if you want to join the team i think there's still a few uh, slots uh, left so uh, fun to see you there but what we're what we're going to see is that uh, the head group now probably able to catch on uh, and, and sort of be, get over that bridge. So uh, once again, as you see it kind of develop here, we will see, I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see a little bit better. So we'll see this ridge and we'll see that, you know, the, the sailors can probably make it just kind of just through there. And, uh, and if they do, they're kind of, uh, they will have some more strong wind to keep moving on. But if they don't, then very likely, and we see that, you know, as for the prediction, it says that uh, probably several of them won't quite make it. And, uh, and will likely, uh, you know, get into uh, this more broader, greener zone where they'll have a day or two uh, of just much less wind kind of, you know, gathering more and more uh, around them. So it looks actually from this particular model that we're going to see uh, Apivia and, uh, and Linked Out being able to kind of catch that, uh, that wind wave and kind of surf it uh, quite nicely while we see that uh, Lewis Burton and the rest here. Uh, so that's Sea Explorer, that's, uh, let's see, uh, that is, that's Jean Lecam actually, Yannick Besthaaf, uh, Boris Herrmann. Um, yeah, that they will likely uh, just miss it kind of by a hair. And so if that happens, then we'll probably see both Apivia and Linked Out, uh, you know, after tomorrow evening, let's say, really have a, uh, a big buildup of their lead again as they kind of uh, make their way into Tuesday. Uh, so that's kind of you know what we see happening uh, at the front. Then if we look a little bit more uh, behind that, so uh, here we have uh, Roman Atanasio and uh, Clary Schramer both doing really really well, kind of forming their separate duel behind uh, the leaders. Weather for them looks good, so they're kind of moving out of that slower uh, patch of about two days, which you can see here, uh, you know, between the two systems that they're kind of closest to. And now let's see if they're gonna be able to progress. And yeah, looks like they're gonna be able to kind of really move in and with the system. So they're gonna have really, really good wind. Looks like those two might uh, have a perfect opportunity here because as Boris Herrmann and the rest are likely going to get kind of caught in that kind of area between the two 
systems at the front that are kind of, it's one system but it's breaking up into two. They're likely going to get cut kind of right in the middle, so they'll slow down a bit. But uh, uh, both uh, uh, Yannick Besthaven and uh, Roman Atanasio will likely uh, be in the back of that same wind system and they'll have wind more or less all the way until they uh, meet up with Boris Herrmann and the rest there again. So if that lasts long enough, so, so we have uh, from, from Tuesday on, uh, uh, let's say, they will more or less keep having good wind. As you can see them moving through there. And so likely they'll be able to uh, get a little bit closer uh, during that time, which is nice. Um, then we have the group with, uh, with Lucky 10, which uh, like I predicted yesterday, big chance of really getting stuck right in the middle between two of those big rolling systems. And that's unfortunately uh, uh, what happened. It did move a little bit uh, to the east and so Luckily, uh, Pip Hare here and uh, Dida Costa, who I thought might also get caught in it, actually having a, a, a great time, should, should be having really good wind, especially Pip now should be having you know, 20, 25 knots or so, so she'll be making really, really uh, good speed on board uh, Medallia. But the group that had, uh, had Lucky 10 uh, in here, so Armel, and we have also uh, Alan Rora and uh, Arnold Bozeris and, uh, yeah, Armel, I already had you, who else is in here? Oh yeah, uh, Stefan La Derision. So uh, they are, are, as you can see, really caught in a bit of a wind uh, uh, hole here. So uh, yeah, not really making good speed. I see Lucky 10 here doing six uh, knots over the last uh, 24 hours. So uh, that's no good. And yeah, actually 24 hours of only 5.2. So really, really slow. Let's see how that might resolve itself. Ooh, looks like that's gonna be around for quite a while. Now let's skip ahead a little bit, see when that's gonna get, yeah, okay. so. More or less, they'll have to uh, gradually, you know, crawl their way through, and it will only be Monday around noon, um, Amsterdam time, by the way, <coughs> that they will start to have, uh, you know, really a lot more uh, wind again, and will be able to kind of uh, start making their way as uh, as this low here, uh, you know, is uh, is kind of redeveloping and refocusing, and you know, putting on uh, uh, the wind uh, more. And uh, at that point, looks a lot like uh, uh, both Pip and, uh, and Dida Costa here are gonna be a lot uh, closer to them by then also. So it uh, looks very interesting. Uh, and all the way in the back, of course, uh, yeah, we have a pretty big group here in the back with uh, now finally uh, Jeremy Bijou having some good uh, wind again, nicely making 17 knots in the last uh, uh, four hours and doing 12 and a half over the last 24. So he's making a lot more speed than before again. And we see the group ahead of him still a lot slower, all around 13. So yeah, he's, he's making his way in now. And I think it should basically, yeah, he's in good wind now. And that's just going to more or less stay. It's gonna get stronger. Yeah, he's, he's gonna have a really nice field of wind to just follow along. So uh, uh, like I said yesterday, I think that, uh, yeah, 24 to 36 hours. And, uh, and then hopefully uh, he'll be, you know, he'll, he'll be, I think, uh, will have likely have passed Sebastian Destremeu. Um, but uh, yeah, we'll have to see if it actually happens, but he'll either have passed him or he'll be really, really, you know, almost on the same uh, uh, position as him, uh, I think. So um, yeah, that's it for uh, the state of the Vendee uh, right now. Uh, let's take a look at the Jules Verne. So I told you yesterday that uh, things were getting uh, quite exciting. And uh, as you can see this morning, things have gotten kind of better and, uh, and better for uh, the team on board of uh, uh, Sudibu. Uh, yesterday, so uh, that's, that's a lot further back than yesterday. So uh, yesterday kind of continued, uh, you know, with them building up more and more uh, of a lead over the, uh, over the old uh, uh, record, kind of matching them more or less tack for tack, you know, uh, pun intended. And um, yeah, as, as this morning, they had some real good wind uh, to run. Still latitude wise, so they're, they're not that much further uh, uh, south than uh, I'd export, but they've made enough uh, distance to the, uh, to the east now for it to really, you know, make a big uh, impact. So they, they really have built a very, very nice uh, uh, lead now, which is uh, very, very uh, uh, good. They're about 620 uh, miles ahead of the old uh, uh, record now. So 
a pretty pretty good margin but you know at, at 30 40 knots an hour you know we're still talking about a type of distance that if anything goes wrong within a day um, they'll have uh, the old record uh, you know almost uh, ahead of them again so it's a good lead but uh, in this particular trophy with these boat speeds a very big lead can uh, can get a lot smaller very very uh, fast but as the night went on as you can see they're really uh, you know making their way quite nicely and the wind kind of helping them out by moving more and more uh, you know up into uh, into the north uh, east corner there really helping them to kind of make this slide now uh, another thing that's very different in the in the trofeo verne is that there are no ice gates so um, basically the team on board of sudibu can uh, you know make their own uh, evaluation either what the danger is how much risk they want to take and they can take it as close to um, you know the icy seas of antarctica basically um, as they want so they're already now quite a bit below the ice gate um, that um, that is there uh, for the van der globe and so uh, yeah let's hope that everything uh, works out and they don't need any ice but that's a real difference uh, in the rules so where in the van der globe they would have a problem because they just couldn't go west here to this kind of light wind zone within the trophy of Verne, it's no problem for there to go more and more south and sort of catch this system here and then go underneath and then maybe back up a little bit again and kind of catching uh, this next uh, uh, system. If nothing else uh, goes wrong, I would say that they will keep and perhaps build their lead a little bit more. And by the end of 24 hours more, maybe go, uh, you know, build up their lead to over 700 uh, uh, nautical miles. But uh, we'll have to wait till tomorrow and see what happens. So that's it for the update today. It is Sunday after all. So I'm sure we all have lots of, uh, you know, nice time to spend with family and friends and everything. So uh, enjoy the day. Thank you very much for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, uh, hit the notification bell to make sure you get the updates whenever a new episode is posted. And, uh, you know, if you want to know more, go to the website, see Wolves TV. Dot com. Also, uh, you know, if you want to uh, check out our amazing t-shirts and hoodies and coffee mugs and all that good stuff, all helps to support uh, the channel. Make sure to tune in uh, next week. Like I said, on Tuesday, I'm going to do an interview with an amazing uh, previous Van de Globe uh, finisher from the last uh, edition. Tomorrow, I'm going to tell you guys who it is so you can all put your questions in the uh, uh, comments. I'm going to talk uh, with him a lot also about the psychology of like the preparation for the race, the start, you know, the, the different transformations in the different phases of the race. So we're going to talk technique, but we're also going to really talk about you know, the being there, the being the skipper, having the responsibility, all those type of angles, because I think that's very interesting. So you can already start to formulate some questions and I'll love to hear them tomorrow when I tell you uh, who it is that I'm going to be uh, interviewing. So again, thank you all for watching and uh, I'll see you with a fresh cup of coffee tomorrow.